Uh, can you tell me what is uh, Q as a data structure? Yeah, uh, Q is uh, first in, first out. So we add the element from the rear and we uh, remove the element uh, from the front. So the first one who gets in, uh, gets out first. So it's a FIFO, first in, first out. Okay. So what are the different operations that can be performed on Q? Uh, there are various operations, uh, but three of the major operations are NQ. NQ is adding element to the Q. Uh, then DQ, DQ is removing element from the Q. And then peak, peak is like displaying uh, the element, the top element. So these are the three major operations that is performed in Q. Okay. So can you write your own code to implement a Q using Java and uh, you can perform these operations like enqueuing an element into Q or dequeuing an element from the Q. Can you do it? Yeah. So we want to write the custom implementation of Q using uh, Java, correct? Yeah, all right. So I'll, I'll start writing uh, the code. So first thing is we are going to uh, define a class known as class and uh, the name of the class will be Q because we are implementing Q. So within Q, we are going to have integer array. So I'm going to declare private uh, integer array and ARR. So this, is, this array will hold the actual elements in the Q. Then we have uh, front so front is uh, a pointer so this points to the front of the queue and then we have a rear so this points to the rear of the queue so uh, all the elements will be added at the rear position and the elements will be removed from the front position so added at the rear and uh, removed from the front then we have two more elements one of them is integer uh, capacity capacity is the number of elements that queue can hold and then we have a private integer count. Count is actually the number of elements uh, present at this stage in the queue. So capacity is the maximum number of elements that your queue can hold and count is the actual number of elements present in the queue. So let's try to write the constructor for the queue. So while you are constructing the queue, uh, you call the uh, constructor and this constructor is uh, going to uh, take the size. So size is the capacity of the queue. All right. So after taking size, we are going to make array of that size. So let's try to make a new integer array. And we are going to keep size as uh, the size that we got in from outside. And then uh, the capacity, capacity is the maximum number of element that queue can hold is also equivalent to size. And then front will always be at the zero. Uh, this is the position from where the elements are removed from the queue because Q is FIFO, first in, first out. Rear uh, will assign minus one to the rear. Uh, this is uh, the position where elements are added uh, from, from the rear position. And uh, when we create the queue, the count, uh, count is the number of elements present in the queue will be zero. So our queue will be empty at uh, first when we actually create the queue. So that's about the constructor. Uh, let's try to write our first operation, which is enqueuing. So enqueue is inserting element into the queue. So let's try to write, uh, we are going to have public uh, and then this element, uh, this method is not going to return anything. So it is void and NQ is the name of uh, the method. And this uh, method will take an parameter, which is uh, in teacher and the parameter uh, name is item. So we will call this item and the value of item will be added to our array. But before adding an element uh, to the queue, we have to check if the queue is full or if the queue can still hold uh, elements. So for checking if the queue is full, we have to write a method known as is full. So if the queue is full, then we can't add more elements to it. So that is the reason we are going to uh, write this method full. So it is going to return me a Boolean because it is going to indicate if the queue is full. If it is full, then we it is going to return true. And if it is not full, then it is going to return false. So let's write is full. Okay, and is full uh, returns. So return, uh, how will we find if the queue is full? So if uh, the size of uh, the queue is equal to equal to the capacity so size we are capturing in count. So count is equal to equal to capacity. So if count is equal to capacity, 
that indicates the queue is full and we cannot add more elements uh, to this queue so let's try to let's try to um, add the element to this queue so i'll check if if is full okay so if the queue is full uh, if the queue is full in that case uh, we are going to give the message uh, that is sys out and we are going to print overflow and then we are going to use uh, system dot exit system dot uh, exit um, minus one at this stage the queue is full so we cannot enqueue more elements to the queue otherwise if it is not full and if it comes to line number uh, 21 then we are going to sys out and within sys out i am going to give uh, inserting element inserting and we are going to insert the element that is passed from outside which is item all right now to actually insert the element uh, we already know that elements are inserted at the rear position so i am going to perform a uh, rear equal to rear plus one uh, this is what we have to do rear equal to rear plus one and mod capacity okay so this is very important uh, thing to perform otherwise you can't implement q so rear equal to rear plus one mod capacity now actually at the rear location we are going to add the element so arr of rear so this indicates an underlying array arr of rear is equal to uh, the item that we got from outside okay so that's that is inserted into your uh, array and after this i'm going to increment the count because when we insert an element into our um, queue at that stage we have to increment the number of items in the queue so we can do count plus plus count holds the number of elements actually present in your uh, queue so this is uh, the end queue now i'll try to write the uh, operation for dq dq is where we remove the element from the queue so enqueuing is adding the element to the queue and dq is removing the element from the queue so let's try to write this uh, functionality public while dequeuing uh, the element we just return the element that we are about to remove so dq dq is the functionality all right so dq always removes the element from front as uh, nq adds the element to the rear dq removes the element from the front so let's try to implement this before removing element uh, from the front we are uh, going to check if the queue is empty so for that we first need to write uh, is empty function so to write is empty we are going to use public uh, boolean is empty so is empty will tell me if uh, the queue is empty or not and to check if the queue is empty we are going to check uh, if count is equal to equal to zero so if the number of elements present in the queue is zero, that means our queue is empty. So let's now try to implement uh, the DQ functionality. So for implementing DQ, the first condition is to check if the queue is not empty. So we can only perform DQ operation if the queue, uh, queue is not empty. All right, so let's do this. If queue is empty, then we are going to sys out underflow. Underflow is when uh, the queue does not have any element, so we cannot remove the element. And then we will do uh, system.exit. We'll just exit the um, program. So system.exit uh, minus one. All right. And if uh, it comes at line number 34, that means the queue is not empty and we can uh, remove the element from the flan. So to remove the element, um, integer x equal to ARR, we will actually get the element from the front. So getting element from the front, then we will uh, sys out, uh, we'll actually uh, print what element we are going to uh, remove. So let me do sys out, okay, and uh, removing element. So this is the element we are going to remove, removing uh, plus X. We are going to remove X, which is at the front location of the queue. Uh, then, we are going to uh, perform this operation front equal to front plus one we are just incrementing the value of front and we are doing modulus with the capacity so while uh, dequeuing this is very important step for implementation in the queue 
and as we are removing the element we are going to reduce the count so we are just going to do count minus minus so this will uh, reduce uh, the number of elements present in the queue and then we will return the element that we just removed which is x which was at the front so we implemented uh, nq and dq let's now try to see if that works correctly from our uh, main method so let me uh, make an instance of uh, q so q is our class uh, q q equal to new q i am just creating object of our uh, class and i am going to pass the initial capacity as 5 so this is the capacity uh, q can hold at the max 5 elements because we are passing 5 so let's try to do q dot nq nq is adding element to the q so q dot nq we are going to add 1 Similarly, we will do NQ2, we'll do NQ3. So I've just copy pasted two statements, uh, NQ2 and NQ3. Now uh, we are going to uh, DQ few elements. So Q dot DQ. So DQ removes the element from the front. And Q dot DQ. All right. So now let's try to uh, run this program. So we have enqueued one, we have enqueued two, we have enqueued three, and then we have dequeued, then we have dequeued. All right, so let's try to see what happens. Uh, run as Java application. You can see inserting one, inserting two, inserting three, okay? But in Q, when you remove, uh, so the first that was inserted is removed first. So removing one and then removing two. So this is FIFO kind of data structure. All right. Now uh, we have we have just seen uh, NQ and DQ methods. Now we are going to see uh, the peak method and the size method of the queue. So let's try to understand what uh, the peak method does. Peak just uh, prints the element which is at the front. Okay. So let's try to implement uh, the peak functionality. So I'm going to implement public int peak peak will give you the element which is at the front of the queue without actually removing that element so let's try to do peak into our queue so for uh, giving the element at the front uh, it should not be empty so your queue should have some elements in order to uh, give the element at the front so if it is empty definitely we are going to uh, sys out that the queue is under flow and uh, under flow and definitely we are going to do system.exit because we cannot do peak anymore, system.exit. And I'm going to pass minus one to this peak. All right, if it is not empty, so if it comes at line number 46 uh, and the queue is not empty, then we are going to return ARR of front because uh, our peak method uh, returns the element at the front without modifying the queue. So this is what our peak will do. Now we can uh, see the elements of the queue, what is at the uh, front when, when we enqueue or dequeue. So let's try to do sysout. This out, as far as uh, out, element at front. Okay, and I'm going to do um, q dot peak. All right, so we are uh, enqueuing one, we are enqueuing two and three, and then we will see what is at the front. Then we are dequeuing, then we are dequeuing. So let's try to run this. So you see you added one, you added two, and you added three. Uh, so three gets added to the rear. Okay, so when you do peak, so element at front is one, because that was added first. Now, if I uh, remove something and do element at peak, then the element at front will be printed. So that is about uh, peak. Now we'll implement the last thing, which is uh, size of the queue. So let's try to implement the size of the queue. So I'm going to do public integer size. Size returns the number of actual elements present in the queue. I'm just going to return count. All right, so this is the size. So after enqueuing, I am uh, just trying to uh, print the size of the queue. So let's try to print the size of the queue, sys out. And copying this and uh, 
size of the queue and queue dot size. I'm going to call this. All right. So I saved it. The size of the queue is three after enqueuing three elements. So you can see size of the queue is three and element at front is one. Okay, so this this element is at front. All right. So that's about uh, NQ, DQ, peak, and size elements. There are two more element, uh, two more methods. Uh, is empty and is full. But I think that is self-explanatory. When the count is zero, your queue is empty, and when the count is equivalent to capacity, then your queue is full. So that's about uh, queue. Okay, thanks. Uh, it's working as expected. So that's all about Q. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, please uh, like, share and subscribe to our channel so that we can create more videos like this. And if you have any questions which were asked in your interview, uh, please let us know in the comment section so that we can create more videos like this based on your questions and we will share those with our audience. That's all about this. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.